The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not, in any way, reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. In my previous video regarding neurodiversity in the Philippines, I shared that I suspect myself to be autistic, and some actually autistic and other neurodivergent Filipinos really appreciated the video I made. They told me I might be the first ever Filipino YouTuber who might have touched on this subject without looking at neurodiversity from the outside, but I may be wrong. I knew in my heart that a one-off will never do justice to the stigma and neglect that our rather neurotypical Filipino society treated autistic Filipinos. Those who can speak up for the spectrum are not heard, and even if they listened, they would do it half-heartedly. And this video is why I would like to dedicate at least three, three videos, tatlong videos, yes, you heard me right, three videos. I would like to dedicate at least three videos about autistic Filipinos. In this first video, I will extensively share some of the, th the things and traits I have observed about myself and why I suspect myself to be autistic. We will also deal with the personal observations regarding our rather neurotypical Filipino society and what their perceptions are of autistic Filipinos. Finally, a fun video is, about, is also in the pipeline on what I think are autistic-coded Filipino songs, sp specifically that of the Eraserheads. And boy, I never knew Ellie, Marcos, Buddy, and Rames did what, uh, what they, the music they did back then. I never knew it was that relatable. But before we even begin, I only recently knew to my shame of the demise of one of the most famous autistic voices here on YouTube, Andrew Michael Burns, aka Indie Andy. He is a British autistic man who garnered the appreciation of actual autistics in the UK, the Commonwealth, and the rest of the world. He just got married a few months before he died, and uh, Nicola, his uh, recently widowed neurotypical wife, went on the record on what can be the final video on Andy's YouTube channel on how she is still processing the passing of the neurodivergent love of her life. I sent to her and the rest of the Burns family my utter sorrow and deepest condolences. In the Andy, thank you for being a loud voice for the autistic community around the world. You will be sorely missed. This video is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, from its studio south of Manila, IJR Productions presents The Intrepid Show. Hi, I'm Ian Rinyon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, including being a suspected autistic. Yes, you heard me right. And welcome to another episode of The Intrepid Show. As mentioned earlier, I would focus on what I suspect were the autistic traits I have had when I was younger, it still exists to this day. They would be part of your personality for the rest of your life. That's what I can tell you. And I will also be focusing as well on, uh, on the things I experienced that I resonate very much with the autistic community. Now, here's a little background. My mother is the youngest of three children of my maternal grandparents, both of whom have since passed on. God rest their souls. Her only brother, my uncle, had five children of his own, the youngest of which all of us suspected to be a special kid. Given my own suspicions, I can say this cousin of mine is autistic right off the bat. And I happen to be the firstborn of my own parents and also have a brother and a sister, both of whom are neurotypical as of now. But my sis told me she's having some brain issues of late and we have recently talked about uh, my suspected autism. So that's that. As for my father's side... I could not recall uh, their neurological background, but all I could say is that both my parents lived through the sorrowful 70s and the enigmatic 80s. However, a very distant paternal relative whose parents knew my dad told me that her daughter was uh, suspected to be autistic 
uh, given uh, some of the traits autistic children do, perhaps after discovering my own suspicion of autism. I responded that she was lucky she had her child assessed early on because with cases like mine who were basically suspected to be autistic at a young age but never got an official diagnosis, it is indeed hard because the likes of us had to mask. But having said that, I do suspect the old man to be in the spectrum as well because I remember that he was better at the practical work in his former profession, uh, he's already retired, uh, than teaching or emphasizing the theoretical part of it. So that's that. And he does have some food preferences I inherited, so yeah. <laughs> I do have uh, likes and dislikes when it comes to food, but you know, I digress. In the previous video, I shared that I was having a suspicion about my alleged autism with a possible ADHD comorbidity. Henceforth, I would refer to my mental health suspicion as ADHD, which is basically a backronym of Autistic Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder Suspected. Now, some of the reasons why I think I'm having ADHD is Primarily because of executive dysfunction and hyperfocus. Regulating them both would work lots of wonders, but in itself, it makes my life shitty. And when I say shitty, yes, it's really that shitty. But focusing more on the autistic side of things, I discovered traits and stems I could consider as indicators of autism. There's echolalia. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Scooter brother. Scooter brother! Hand flapping and other gestures, especially when my senses are heightened. Poor eye contact, and that's the reason why in some of the videos I always look uh, everywhere and uh, my eyes are wandering all around my work, uh, my workstation. That's that. Rocking motions and other repetitive bodily behavior. Having fidget toys such as this palisong style comb. Yes, this is just a comb. He, uh, this is no blade. This is... Uh, do not... Uh, no, do not tell... Uh, do not tell Shad of Shadiversity about this one because this is just a simple comb, okay? Uh, that's that. So, uh, I do know how to flip this around, but I'm still practicing. I also have... Uh, this poker chip from heaven knows how did this end up here, but that's a fidget toy. That's also one of my fidget toys. Being clumsy, yes, uh, I do get uh, clumsy sometimes uh, everywhere, uh, so that's that. <laughs> Getting easily upset and even emotional if something goes wrong, and I mean terribly wrong, uh, especially if routines are ruined. Ah, ano ba naman tong isang tweet na to? Hindi alam na ano, katoliko si Darren Espanto. Siya yung kumata ng Tell the World of His Love nung dumating nga Santo Papa sa UST noong 2015. Did, didn't she do her fucking research? Easily forgets and has a warped sense of time, something similar to ADHDers. Bukas na lang. And sensory overload. In my case, more on sound than anything else. That also means I, that I get too emotional and cry every time I'm triggered by something I have seen, heard, or smelled, whether happy or sad, or whether pleasing or repulsive. Specifically, tears flow every time I listen or sing to church music and aesthetically pleasing liturgy and major feast days such as Christmas, Easter, uh, and, uh, and all the other major feasts of the Catholic Church. As you know, I am a Catholic and I attend Mass every Sunday, so that's that. I also have this crying tendency, specifically uh, if there are uh, there's church music that employ majestic arrangements of brass and pipe organ or even a four-voice harmony, or if the priest would employ the best vestments and vessels and incense that he would use for Mass. It's just that good. Trust me, 
If you're a Catholic, you would absolutely understand where I am coming from. It's what we call in Tagalog as mababaw na luha or shallow tears. Yeah, that uh, those kind of things happen. And even in secular music or even in uh, even in uh, stuff that uh, that really triggers me, my my eyes get wet. So that's that. A particular stim that I have managed to do without being called a freak is when I always wanted to smell the scent of coffee beans and coffee bags. You know, those packagings, uh, or those packaging packagings that have a small hole so that you can smell a certain coffee blend. No matter how many times I go for grocery runs for the needs of everyone here in Intrepid HQ, I can never get tired of smelling the scent of coffee before they are brewed. How much more if I get to drink them? And honestly, there should be a coffee mug right here. But by the time that I am recording this, it's around 11.30 in the morning. So, bakit ako magkakape ng tanghaling tapat? <laughs> like other autistics, I also have my own hobbies. From the typical to the absolutely weird. And I can't help but talk or think about it. For hours and hours and hours until such time, I suddenly withdraw from even involving myself in it. Hi, Post Prodian here. Nakalimuta ko sabihin sa inyo yung mga uh, current hobbies ko uh, now that I've uh, discovered uh, discovered that I may be autistic. I suspect myself to be autistic. Uh, tatlo lang ang main, ano, main um, hobbies ko as, it, as of this moment. Um, analog horror. Kaya medyo napapadalas yung mga memes and ano, memes and uh, um, references ko sa Mandela catalog to be specific and also have I've been ano I've been uh, uh, looking into uh, the back rooms as well and then second is amateur radio actually di ko rin alam kung paano ko ano paano ko i-sort out yung sa amateur radio um, hobby ko kasi kailangan ko kailangan ko magkaroon ng lisensya and uh, I really just can't uh, squeeze it in right now because of uh, because of work but then again I wanna know I wanna get that sorted out and finally I cycle so uh, I think I'm gonna debut I'm gonna debut my I know my uh, Strava account <laughs> sa, ano na to, sa, uh, sa video na to. I'll be providing my Strava account uh, in in the pinned comment below uh, so that you can uh, check me out and uh, check the very first ano, the very first uh, rides that I ever had and uh, medyo nag-iisang wala pa ako sa isang buwan sa pag ano, sa, pag, uh, sa Strava so I hope uh, you would follow me on Strava and uh, maybe uh, give me some ideas on how how on earth am I gonna uh, sort out uh, sort out cycling and uh, make it a very uh very good hobby for the long term. So, yun lang naman. I also have a little bit of an issue about hoarding, specifically books, pens, office desk items, and electronics-related materials and tools. Of course, there's also executive function issues, as mentioned in the neurodiversity video. You can check it out at uh, the upper right corner of the screen. And they damn beat me every single fucking time. Also, when, I, when I'm around people, Aside from having to mask, I also felt social awkwardness in certain situations where I am supposed to be functioning like a neurotypical. For example, prior to this recording, I I cycled. Uh, I, ako. I, just, I borrowed my brother's bike because he's not uh, around here uh, often. So, yeah. I, of course, I am the older guy. I uh, He told me, Kuya, sige. Uh, basta ingatan mo lang. <laughs> And um, it's still fine. I still got home in one piece, so that's that. And that last item fucking hits me hard. Because even at home, I can't help but mask. You see, I was the type of school kid who was trying to fit into a group of people while not necessarily calling them friends. What's worse is that they either see me in a bad light or outrightly bully me just because. To spare you all the drama... My elementary and high school days were very hard. College, well, there were still there are still instances of me of me being isolated from groups within my class, but they were not that hard. It was 
not as hard as elementary and high school. College was way better. And yes, I was with the same people during my four years in university. So uh, that's that. Also, I had scuffles here and there with some of them, though I generally had a good time with those folks. But I think I've regretted, I have regretted telling my story to them during our senior year retreat because I thought my story was not as important or as compelling as theirs. Then, as mentioned briefly in my neurodiversity video, I have had a lot of issues regarding job security. It's either the workplace is toxic, the workplace ethics is toxic, the people I work with are either neurotypicals or toxic or all of the above. Only recently did I realize that I have an issue regarding colleagues as well as imposter syndrome. Yeah. What is imposter syndrome? In a nutshell, imposter syndrome deals with people who think they are inferior to their colleagues or just got to where they are because they're lucky. But they manage to keep up as long as they are not caught. Thoughts of unworthiness for good things and worthiness for bad ones uh, and comparing myself with others always overwhelm me to the point of overthinking every time I see someone getting married or someone having a business or someone achieving something or reaching a personal milestone. Basically, imposter syndrome triggers that tormenting thought in your brain telling you something like, Friday's getting married, April's business is growing, Tim achieved his goals, and yet here the fuck you are, still unsuccessful and lagging behind. Which is particularly an insult to adults who were once praised as gifted or exceptional children while becoming counterproductive in schoolwork later in life. Of course, this depends on the support autistic individuals had from their parents and carers when they were children. It is something similar to being left behind in life, but 200% worse. Maybe that's also the reason why I made this channel after all, because I failed to tell my story. Because I was afraid to tell it. Or because I think my story is not worth listening to. Well, I think it still is the case, but at the very least, I would try to share my story even though nobody gives a damn. But imposter syndrome coexists with the attitudes of people-pleasing and humility. Though while the latter is a virtue in its own right, a little too much might be detrimental to your mental and spiritual health. For believers out there, a good balance of faith requires both humility and dignity that while you recognize your nothingness, which is a good practice in itself, you also have to understand your worth, that God called you by name and loves you for who you are. Also, it would be a great thing if we can be kind to ourselves as much as we are kind to others. And those are the things I myself struggle to recognize. And I even think the autistic Catholic priest, Father Matthew Schneider, finds it a struggle. But then again, we do things one step at a time, one day at a time. Anyway, Father Schneider's book, God Loves the Autistic Mind, Prayer Guide for Those on the Spectrum and Those Who Love Us, is out now. I just hope it gets released by the dollars of St. Paul here in the Philippines. So, I say, St. Paul's, baka naman po. In conclusion, I still struggle with my suspected autism. And I also have to get an official diagnosis to be really sure. I still have to learn about this as long as I live. And at the very least, if I am indeed in the spectrum, I could be of help to others who are wondering what it is like to be autistic. That despite the wiring of our brains, we are just like the rest of humanity. That we are different, not less. But despite all of these challenges, I, like other autistic adults, still function and still try to be productive, proactive, and useful to society. That, however, is easier said than done here in the Philippines, where our society is still rather neurotypical. Or at least prefer neurotypicals in everything, and relegate neurodivergence as, for the lack of a better term, laboratory rats and circus acts. In part 2 of this video series, I would talk about why autistic Filipinos have to mask and are sometimes sick and tired of it, and why our country would have a long way to go in at least accepting that there are neurodivergent Filipinos in our society and that autistic Filipino adults seem to be underrepresented or unironically not represented at all in national NGOs that tackle about autism. But we have come to the end of this video. If you like what you've just watched, 
I would really appreciate it if you would comment below what you think about this topic, share this video, video around, and leave a thumbs up. While you're at it, subscribe as well to my channel and ring the notification bell by selecting all if you haven't already. If you financially can, I would also appreciate your donations through Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, Ko-Fi, or PayPal. All of the links to them are in the description below. So with all that said, this is Intrepidy and Rignon reminding you to, at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, take care of yourself and your brain, and as always, thank you for watching. See you next time, and know that you're never alone. Yeah, now.